Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here from the 45 Drives team. Whoa, what's this? No Brett or Mitch today, but that's all right. They're not going anywhere, I promise. So we're gonna be shifting gears with our bi-weekly tech tip videos from our usual longer form technical videos to a combination of basic and technical tutorials. This way we could try and help educate everyone when it comes to the world of data storage. Whether you're just starting out your IT or system admin journey or you're looking to level up your skills even further, we're gonna have you covered. In our basic tutorials, we'll cover the essential building blocks of IT, data storage concepts, networking tips, and much more. We'll start with the basics, introducing you to key concepts and defining terms that will form the foundation of your knowledge. Our technical videos in this series will skip the definitions and get right into the problem solving. Most of these topics will actually come from problems and solutions that our own architects see in the field and best practices that they wish they had have known when they were trying to solve the problem themselves. So going forward, you're gonna expect a little bit of both. But for today's video, we wanna talk about what you should know when transitioning from single server storage to storage clustering. So transitioning from a single storage server to storage clustering can bring significant benefits in terms of performance, scalability, and fault tolerance. Now in this video, we will compare both infrastructures to ensure that you understand if, or even when, you should be making the upgrade from a single server infrastructure to a storage cluster. The first question you should be asking yourself is, well, why should I be transitioning? Storage clustering offers several advantages over a single storage server. By distributing data across multiple servers, you can enhance performance by enabling parallel data access. What this means is that even if one storage server fails, your data will still remain accessible. Magic? Not quite. There's some fancy software involved to make sure that that happens, and if you've been following us for a while, you know that we love to talk about Ceph. Now, if you are interested in diving deeper into Ceph, we have tons of written articles and videos to check out, along with webinars and even a two-day Ceph crash course. And for the hardware, well, beware of an upcoming shameless sales plug. We are New Enterprise. We architect big, strong, fast storage solutions that help users tame their storage zoo and create a runway for storage growth. We also understand that data storage requirements are actually growing faster than most organizations' IT budgets and resources. Now, we do have a dedicated team that will help you understand if you should be upgrading to a storage cluster, and will also gladly help you with the how to successfully do that transition. Whether that be a Ceph storage cluster for general file storage, or a high performance storage cluster for those demanding workloads. Before deciding to make the switch, it's crucial to evaluate the features and benefits of both single servers and clustering. For today, let's look at two specific features, scalability and availability. So the first thing you need to do is assess your current storage workload to determine if it's reaching capacity limits or even experiencing any performance bottlenecks. With single servers, scaling up your storage means purchasing new hardware such as a second storage server. Now, new storage spaces will then get created, users will then need to be pointed to these new spaces, data is gonna get moved around, and users are gonna end up being disrupted, and this means even operational costs are also gonna increase but that's traditionally how you'll scale up with a single server infrastructure. Now, scaling bigger with storage clustering means that you buy new hardware, plug it in, that could be new drives or even a new server, and there's going to be no impact on users with downtime. And the storage spaces can be as big as you want with higher powered clusters. With storage clustering, storage spaces that your users are gonna work off of are defined in software, and they're spread across multiple servers. For example, if you're a company with a lot of marketing assets and even more specifically video assets that are being constantly accessed for production purposes, disruption can be a major problem with deadlines, especially if you have multiple users trying to access the same files at the same time. Next up, we look at high availability. Now, nobody likes emergencies. They are stressful, but they can happen. So it's important to have a plan in place. Now with single servers, if there is an issue with your storage infrastructure that occurs in the middle of the night, now you're an IT professional at a local municipality, you have to act quick or there will be major consequences for that downtime. Also, hopefully you have a backup plan in place if there's any lost data from faulty hard drives. 
Now, with storage clustering, your data is always going to be available. This means that multiple copies of your data are spread across multiple storage servers to ensure that high availability of your data. This is also fault tolerant, enabling you to lose disks or even servers while still keeping your data online and accessible. Now, if there's an emergency in the middle of the night, just finish the rest of your sleep. Everything is going to be fine. So if you've went through the considerations for switching and agree that the time to switch is now, there are some basic things to think about while you plan this transition. Infrastructure assessment. Evaluate your existing hardware and network infrastructure to ensure compatibility with storage clustering requirements. Network configuration. Configure your network to accommodate storage clustering. Ensure that all servers are connected through a high-speed, low-latency network for optimal data transferring. Data backup and migration. Before transitioning, back up your data to ensure its integrity throughout the entire process. You might want to develop a migration plan to transfer data from the single storage server to the new storage cluster. Now that the plan is in place and your hardware and network infrastructure is ready for the transition, ensure that you do the following. Configure your cluster. Set up and configure your storage cluster by connecting multiple storage servers together. If you have upgraded or purchased a storage cluster from 45 drives, you'll be using our Houston server management software to use a module called Ceph Deploy to ensure an easy configuration and deployment. Data replication. Configure data replication between the storage servers to ensure redundancy in data availability. Now this may involve implementing such techniques as RAID or distributed file systems. The good thing, we have tons of videos that discuss these concepts in detail. Testing and validation. Conduct thorough testing to ensure that the storage cluster is functioning correctly. Verify data accessibility and performance metrics. Gradual transition. Begin the migration process by gradually transferring data from the single storage server to the storage cluster. Now monitor the process to closely ensure data integrity and minimize that downtime. Now there's also some best practices to ensure a successful transition. Make sure that you do things like document the process. Keep detailed records of the steps that you followed during the transition. This documentation process will be valuable for future referencing and troubleshooting. Now also, you're going to want to make sure that you monitor performance too. Continuously monitoring the performance of your storage cluster will make it easier to identify any potential issues and optimize its configuration. Now look, there's obviously much more to talk about in this process than what we discussed in this video. Currently, we do have tons of technical tutorial videos on storage clustering and Ceph Deploy and even Ceph in general for you to check out. If you watch this video and you're still confused on transitioning from single server to storage clustering, that's fine. I'm always confused too. It's cool. But we do have storage architects in-house that are ready to walk you through the entire process based on your exact specific storage requirements. If you want to go a step further, you can also sign up for Linux or Ceph training from our educational team. So by carefully following the information in this video, you can accurately decide whether a transition from single storage to storage clustering makes the most sense for your infrastructure and your requirements. Now remember, plan thoroughly, test rigorously, and monitor your storage cluster regularly to ensure optimal performance and data availability if you are transitioning. We're going to be talking about this topic a lot more in the near future, so stay tuned for more videos and maybe even a podcast featuring some special guests. So I'm Chris. The other guys will be back soon, and hopefully this video helped anybody understand what's involved in transitioning from single servers to storage clustering. We'll see you on the next one.